Today, I'm happy to welcome Gulmake Salah. She is an author, the founder of a not-for-profit based on goodness, and a busy woman educating and uplifting children. She's a speaker, a mentor, an author, and she lives to inspire children and students to be heroes to themselves and to their communities, encouraging positivity in themselves and the environment, and bringing them to a place where the golden rule is contagious. During her childhood, Gamaki was a victim of war, bullying, and not being understood. Now she's a survivor. She came to the USA as a refugee when she was a child, and she was a refugee from Afghanistan. But she's lived here in the United States for over 30 years, and she's written three children's books, The Goodness Soup, Princess Diversity, and The Golden Rule, and she has a new book called Touched by a Butterfly. She works with and educate communities of all faiths, races, and nationalities. And her program is called, and she's the director of the Golden Tree of Goodness. And I'm just filled with curiosity because I love the title, Touched by a Butterfly. Could you tell us what the book is about? Hello. First, thank you for having me. I really appreciate uh, you wanting to interview me and promoting goodness. Um, I am very happy. Uh, why was I inspired to name it Touched by a Butterfly? See, my name um, is, is connected to my name and what I do and what I want to promote. My name is a name from Afghanistan. It's a Pashto name. That's the language we speak. Pashto. Gual means flower and maki means butterfly. <sighs> <laughs> so when um, you know, there's a saying, what you eat, you become that, what you wear, you become that. And of course, whatever your name is, it reflects your character, your personality. So when I, I look at my name, I see that I am a butterfly that's flying around beautiful flowers and touching them. And these flowers are children. So that, that's where the name came from. And why I wanted to write the book is because we need more mentors for our young children. You know, what, what I went through in my life, I wish I had mentors guiding me. So I, 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 I wish people could use this book. This is the book. I wish people could use this book as a tool to connect with children and talk about the different ways they could help them bring the best out of them, give them a growth mindset, believe in themselves, that they could do anything that they put their mind to. That's good. So this isn't really a book for children, but for adults to work with children and share with children? No, actually, the story is for children. It's a uh, good for four through through eight years old, four to eight years old children, age group. Um, I mean, even it could go up to nine. Even younger kids it could it could be read too. But oh, okay. I, I say the book could be used as a tool to connect with children. You know, as an, a teacher or a mentor could read the story to them and connect with them through the story. Oh, okay, okay. I misunderstood. I was had this thought that you had exercises in there for <laughs> for the adults to do with the children. That, and actually having them being able to read the book is, is better yeah, than yeah. exercises that you give them to do. Mm -hmm. So is so this book just came out this year or at the end of last year? Well, it just, um, I haven't announced it yet. So I'm doing a promotional launch. I'm thinking of doing it March 22nd, where I do a live Facebook live and a, a party, <laughs> a yes. launch party on Facebook, and get people to know about the book and promote it. 
so it is out it's just that I, i'm not announcing it because i want every i want to do the the facebook live and explain my reason why i did it why i want to this also connects to one of the article i wrote on productive muslim page um and it was about the 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 it's, it was about the village around the children. It's crumbling and how we can rebuild it is becoming mentors. And we're all mentor, mentors to children, whether we like it, we think we are or we think we're not. Whatever we promote, whether it's our ideas, whether it is our, our words or our action, our ch the children are always looking at us. So when I went through my life, you know, I noticed that I didn't have a lot of mentors, very few, they were very weak. And I noticed working with children for the past 15 years, I noticed a lot of children too do not have mentors now. I mean, mentors, you don't have to have a professional job to be a mentor. Simple guidance, simple uh, instructions, simple coaching could help a child change their lives, their mindset, the way they look at life. Um, you know, there's many things. I, you know, it, I, again, I look back at what my name means, you know, being a butterfly, and I follow the stages of a butterfly, you know, where they're in the uh, egg, and then they're in a, a, a caterpillar stage, and then they're in a cocoon stage, and they then they become an adult and open up their wings and fly. See, I came out of that stage, but a lot of, a lot of children that grow up become adults, they never develop those wings to fly. Uh, they either turn to drugs, they either turn to commit suicide, or they, 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 they're they angry with their, the world. They just hate the world. They just hate people because so many things happen in their childhood, you know, with a simple guidance from an adult or a younger uh, adolescent could even help guide them on the right path. And I, I said that this book could be used as a tool to connect with that child and guide them and make them open-minded, a growth mindset, have them develop a growth mindset. In a way of helping to give, the, give them more resilience. Because um, one of the ladies I talked to was talking about resilience being able just to be able to handle knowing how to handle difficult situations and to survive them and overcome them like you said going through that butterfly process and a lot of people don't ever get to come out of the cocoon like and that's really important and it's important that that you're out here trying to guide people to help children because i think a lot of people have seen because of the red the children the some children who are online and making money and doing this and doing that and i think some people think children don't need guidance that they can just you know go to school and learn what they need but you know that it's that personal interaction and personal ex examples and the need children have to be heard and seen and know someone cares. Yeah. You, you know, the approach I do is I, I approach a whole, as a holistic approach. I don't just deal with the children. I also deal with parents or, or the caregivers, the teachers that are around the child. So we just can't like, you know, we can't just um, give a band-aid and say, hey, our kid, do this and do that. We also have to help those around the child. Because uh, sometimes those parents or those educators, they're lost and confused too on how to deal with certain type of children who have certain issues. So, you know, it's good to approach with a holistic mindset and, you know, look at from all angles and help the child develop themselves. Uh, I'm doing a recent uh, re research right now on how uh, social media influencers are influencing our younger children and, and how we could guide these influencers to be more positive and more, you know, how, how they promote whatever they're doing, you know, so they understand that what they're doing could have an effect on their moral development of the child. Because a lot of, you know, I have my daughters 
I have so many students who are always on YouTube, on Instagram, or wherever Snapchat. They're looking at these people. Now there's a new new thing, Tic Tac, TikTok, <laughs> that's oh. out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so many things, so many social media platforms are coming out. It's just, you know, you can't keep up with it. And uh, young people who are not fully developed they're going there and they're promoting things and they don't know what they're doing yet and they just you know my daughter for example she started she started instagram page and she's under my account so i go through her account and her name is not known so but what she do is she's helping people the same way as i am she's putting good posts you know so i'm encouraging other parents to watch mentor their children what are they doing online? They're influencers. They're they're developing. They're they're, they're they they are. Um, these children are setting the stage for how this child will develop morally. So always supervising that child on social media. What they're doing. What are they promoting? What are they saying? Who are they following to you? You know, it could be both ways whether you're the follower, you're the influencer, the one who's promoting. And it's really important for the parents to be actively engaged with what their children are doing on social media because Instagram is, which is owned by Facebook, has the same tendency um, for people to lurk and um, be less than you know, have questionable intentions. And if you're an adult, you can see it and say, block them. But if you're a child or especially a child who's wanting attention or something and somebody sends them a direct message saying, hi, beautiful. If you don't have someone saying, no, that's not a good idea. Or who is this person? A, you know, people could, a child could really get hurt or getting very confused without. Yeah. the supervision because you know but you don't want to, on the other hand too and it's more work for the parent but you don't want to unless you you're living yourself as a, an adult with no social media <laughs> you can't tell your children you can't do this but I can you know without them going and doing it on their own yeah. unless you or you don't give them a, a cell phone or give them the tools to do it so it is important for pe for parents to be actively engaged with, the, with what their children are doing. Because I have a um, niece who they, I can't get pictures of her children without a promise. I had to tell her a promise. I'm not going to put them on social media because she is, some, some of the younger people are totally opposed to having their, anything on social media, which is kind of in a way good if you have, you know, you're in a place where you have friends and people you don't really, and you're not doing business on it. It isn't something that's essential for your life, contrary to what a lot of people have led us to believe about social media. But you use social media in a very good way and your um, posts are always interesting. You find some of the more, interesting uh, articles, you find people doing positive actions and caring for people. And I really enjoy watching, um, checking out your posts, more so on Facebook than I have been on, on Instagram, because I haven't been on Instagram that much. So tell us a little bit more about your foundation and the work that you're doing for goodness. So, um the golden tree of goodness is um, I'm working to make it into a nonprofit. It's taking time, <laughs> but uh, I have my three books and every, each book have some way of promoting goodness. There's a theme to every book, which, you know, there's a reading session I give from the book for the younger age kids. And then there's workshops for the older kids. And of course, there's workshops for adults, like the parents and the educators, uh, for each book on that theme. So like my first book, The Golden, the Goodness Soup, that is an interfaith story with a Muslim family living next to a Christian family who are elders. So it teaches about neighborhood and neighborly love. 
It teaches about parents, respecting parents. And it also uh, teaches how the older son in the story becomes a leader and guides the younger siblings um, to do what is right. Uh, so those are the morals I want to give through this book and how we could implement. And of course, the golden, the golden rule is in the story too. Um, my second book, The Golden Tr um, Princess Diversity and the Golden Rule, this book was inspired uh, by my life when I was bullied at school because I was of a different faith. So I, and I still notice that even today kids are, it, it just have gone berserk with bullying, you know. It's not, it's not just kids bullying, it's also in, in workplaces, you know, because the kids never changed when they were, they were never stopped when they were young, they became adults and they still continue to bully. So that, that story, it's about bullying. Um, even if you're, you know, finding resiliency uh, against bullies, applying the golden rule, helping others who are being bullied uh, and just motivating and it's, di it's about diversity. So this character, Princess Diversity, she has uh, blonde hair, she has brown skin, she has freckles, she has eyeglasses, she's poor. She, she has a, ha a hand that's not working properly. So she has all these different elements that kids could get laughed at. So that's why I made her like that. You know, what would a child be laughed at wearing glasses? What would be a child laughed at having freckles or ha having dark skin or having um, bushy hair? So I gave her those. Uh, I, I told my illustrator to give those um, uh, characteristics to her body. So that book is about that. And of course, that goes, you know, it goes with the different age group with the younger kids reading session with the puppet show and then the older kids a workshop it's a more an interactive workshop and for the adults on how to combat bullying at school using the golden the art of the golden rule against school bullying and then now my third book which i already spoke about it's uh, you know with this i made a t uh, for one act play uh, which we i just did at a recent event me and my daughter uh, it's, it's about the book, you know, how the, uh, there's a leaf, uh, there's a flower that turns a stem, uh, a seed that turns into a stem, a stem turning into a leaf with a stem. And, you know, it grows at the process of a flower. And this caterpillar is always helping and motivating this flower that you could grow, you could grow, you could do it, you could do it. And then at a certain time where the flower is a bud, the flower wants to doesn't know what to do you know constantly seeking help from this mentor this friend the caterpillar but at this time the caterpillar has gone into a cocoon it's becoming an adult and as the bud is waiting uh, the the caterpillar the, ca the cocoon opens up and a beautiful butterfly comes and touch the bud which the bud transforms into a beautiful flower so that's where the touch of a butterfly <laughs> is oh. you know the bent they give that love, that care to the child. Oh, that's a beautiful story. I really Thanks. like that. That is really, really good. It's, it's almost like a folk tale. It's really <laughs> great. Yeah. And I like your description of the little girl. It's kind of like I was, except that because I had bushy hair but my, when I was little, but my mom was braided it. And I have freckles. And I have glasses, but no one picked on me. I was, I don't know, um, I was one of those children who was fortunate enough not to pay any attention to anybody. So <laughs> I didn't, I was always kind of in my own world and I don't, and I also grew up in an Air Force family. So I never spent more than two years in any one school. So it was like, I was always new and sometimes when you're, totally new people kind of ignore you <laughs> and you don't you know as opposed to when someone's there long enough for someone to start to pick on them or deal with those things but I know now but I did know that when I graduated from high school I was very happy and I said right after I was out of high school that I was glad I graduated when I did because I could see then that and knowing myself that if I had been born a little bit later, I might not have ever finished high school. 
because I was, you know, it's become really, it hasn't to me in a lot of ways with all the progress we're making. A lot of the schools, children have not progressed you know, and it's difficult for children because I don't, it's hard to, to take care of emotional and social needs when you got 30 people in one room and expect them, one adult to basically, you, you can't even hardly learn in that kind of environment, especially when you need more individual attention. So a lot of the problems in schools are created by the nature of what we have. So it's really important to have people yeah. like you writing the books you're writing and doing the work you're doing to kind of fill in those gaps that the schools can't handle right now because the changes yeah, that need to be made are revolutionary. Yeah, the administration, working with the administration. You know, teachers having 50, 30 children, students, it's not possible unless she has a teacher aid with her to help her maintain the children. And then with elementary class, you, you know, it's just that one teacher most of the time, except for a few different subjects, you get different teachers. But in middle school and higher, you know, that teacher just meets you 45 minutes and that's it. And then she has another set of students. And being a teacher myself, I know the difference because uh, I made one in my beginning years, I was working with different students, but once different classrooms, but once uh, two, three years passed, I was like, no, I want one classroom. I just want to focus on these set of students because I, I will learn their personality. I'll learn their learning style and I will work with them. I would know their likes, their dislikes, their strengths, their weakness, and I could do better with them. And it, it did work out. I had them, I, ha I had that one set of students and I worked with them and, uh, you know, they came out uh, to achieve their goals in academic, their academic teachings. Um, you're right. It's a lot, you know, it's, you know, uh, us coming from the bottom, we could do as much, but those up higher, they need to wake up and, take some actions because I, I am somewhat disappointed because, you know, I do go to libraries and schools and churches and other religious centers and I offer my service and they do complain that there's bullying happening, but they're not interested. <laughs> they're not interested. And um, I know it takes an effort. It takes an effort to put an event together uh, but we're willing to do it. So, you know, and I'm always helping them. You know, I could promote the event. I could work with you, create the flyer, create the announcement, share it. Uh, but, you know, some people are, you know, they just don't want to give it, get, put effort into it. Yeah. Oops. I don't know. People, but it's good that you're able to get where you are and um have you ever thought about do you ever do anything on youtube well what uh, i do webcast uh, lives on facebook and i take them and i put on youtube i edit them and put on okay. youtube and there's like other interviews i had the one i had with you i put it there and i have two channels but um uh, have you ever done anything for the children that's on YouTube? Um, I have another channel, Youth Under the Shade. That's more directed to Muslim children. And that was before I came out of my cocoon. I was doing it with my children who will make short videos on different, different uh, topics and I will put it up there. Uh, for children and they were excited they did I noticed a lot of children did enjoy it's for me YouTube is hard to get subscribers and viewers uh, I Facebook is like the main thing for me well you're doing well on Facebook and it's hard and you've done very well in getting the following you yeah. have and the thing about YouTube is it's well I can't say it's forever <laughs> but as long as it is a platform your work continues to be you never know who will see your work and how and it continues to impact people because i've it it 
I'm constantly surprised every now and then I'm going to get a comment from somebody on videos I made two years ago, two or three years ago. And I've act and sometimes some of the ones I'm doing now. And I've actually had people sending me uh, comments thanking me for something, for one of the videos. And these were, some of them were stories, but some of them, I, and I can't remember, I did a series of Black History um, videos a couple of years ago, and then I've done stories that I've done. And um, I just think that the work you're doing, anytime like, you, like you've done, like repurposing videos that you've done is really good. But if you ever get the opportunity to work with some kids and could have it recorded and put on YouTube too, it would it could build up. It might be slow and it might not be a whole lot of people, but you could that it would be a way of impacting people you wouldn't know necessarily, but it would be there. And I always my thing is like whatever we do, the more we put it out there, it has an effect. And YouTube actually, it really does. It's surprising how um people find things sure, you're right. and and um doing you know if if you and it's all in the title and some of the words you use about you know like like how you can be a better person or how you can be happy or how you can be good or you know there's different ways so i just think you would you would be really, could have some really successful shows. But I understand Facebook, and you're doing really well with Facebook. And that's, that's uh, a lot of people, and a lot of us kind of struggle to get someone, but you do real good posts. You have good information. And I think that, and you've got a, and I think your interviews have been really a, um, an engine for your Facebook because your interviews are really good you get good people and you get your audience engaged and you've done really well with building that audience thank you yeah yeah the facebook live i see has more impact besides if i just put a re upload a video to facebook it doesn't have as much view but if i do a live it has a more greater impact on it it's, the thing is having the right audience i might have an audience but it's not the audience for what I am trying to promote. Not everyone wants to know about how to raise a child or how to help a child or worry about bullying. So that's that's one issue, you know, I come around is, do I have the right audience, even though I might have a larger follower than others? Um, and so I've been really thinking of that, you know, how can I get the right audience? Uh, so I could share this message of mine, you know, I try to promote goodness with the children. Because it's the children we need to help because they will be the next generation. They will be our presidents. They will be our leaders. They will be our doctors and police officers and teachers. What kind of morals will they have? What, what type of ethics will they have? What type of mindsets will they have? Will they be able to raise the following generation? So that's why I focus, focus a lot on young children. And that's important because they're the ones who take care of us when we get older. <laughs> People yeah. don't think about that, you know. In one way or another, these children will be doing the work that will impact our lives too. So what are your, you, I know you're gonna be launching your new book, what other activities you have planned um, for promoting goodness? I have my fourth book coming too. <laughs> so that's The Courageous Smile, titled The Courageous Smile. That's after my granddaughter. Uh -oh. she, was born with a premature, she was born prematurely and she was born with a cleft lip and palate. But what she taught me that, you know, no matter how broken you are, how hard a life you have, you still could give something back. And that could be a simple smile. So, you know, even though she was going through so much and we were so sad that what she went through, she will always give us a smile. So that's why I was inspired to write that book, Smiling. You know, and something is, a smile has a lot to do with me because <laughs> uh, also me, myself, I was bullied and called Mona Lisa because I always smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daughter, 
uh, my older daughter, she got in trouble in school because she was smiling. We're the smiling family. <laughs> and I did a talk on this and how smiles, I, when I was doing the research for my talk, I, I tried to find out how does it affect other people. But most things you'll find in the research scholarly work is how it affects me, like it you know, makes me happy and stuff. <clears throat> I just found one research that was done in, uh, in Scotland, I believe. Uh, I have to go through my notes. Uh, yeah, it was done in Scotland where um, they noticed that the, the, the smiles are contagious. So what the answer was right there. You know, whatever I feel, how it makes me feel, if I smile and I make you smile, the same uh, things happen to you. It, it gives the same reaction to you. So smiles is a, smiling is a great thing to do. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I guess I can't. Well, I, actually, I know there's some people, because I laugh, too. <laughs> and sometimes I'll be the only person laughing. <laughs> And, and I can see where people sometimes think you shouldn't be laughing about that. That isn't funny. I don't laugh at other people, but some things that some things happen and I'll laugh. Sometimes I try not to laugh real loud, but it is, it's a, it's good to be able to smile and laugh at, about things instead of yeah. getting stressed out or worried or concerned yeah. about something because, and a smile is, is uplifting and I'm sure that, that there's a lot of biological things that are happening uh, with our nerves and the chemicals in your body when you smile it's sending yeah. good things through your body so this is a so the smile book will be another book after your um, butterfly book yeah I'm t anticipating it during the summertime or early fall time uh, I have uh, the two books I illustrated them myself, The Touch by a Butterfly. I did this my first time I did graphic design on my own. <laughs> so oh, I wow. did everything. Well, oh, yeah. you and are so, really, those are beautiful. Thank you. And my first book, The Golden, The, the Goodness Soup, I, I drew that with my own hands. This was graphic. Uh, for my Princess Diversity and this other book, I hired an uh, illustrator. Can you draw very well? It's really pretty. Thank I'm you. Uh, I'm getting ready to to do some drawing too. My husband draws comics, yeah. and he's been telling me for years that I can draw. And I had done a couple twenty four hour comics, and I've got um, for my birthday I bought these two dolls that were made in Africa by a, a Nigerian, and I had my black Barbie doll, and I set them up. And I've been looking at them and I finally said, I told him, I said, I want to make a comic. I'm going to do an Instagram comic <laughs> of my dolls because they'll be able to talk about being a woman of color and different issues, you know, real easy. And, and it, drawing is, is, is relaxing in a way for me, yeah, working yeah, with, with a pencil. Because I started writing every day a page and I was, I'm handwriting, and that's what I started enjoying. I said, oh, I like doing this writing. And that's what said, oh, I think I'll do some drawing too, because it's nice to get off the computer <laughs> and do wow. something more yeah. creative. So, um, so you're going to do another book, and you... You work so primarily. Have you been doing all of your work in the town where you live, or do you go into other states? So I've been to a few states. I've been to Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia, um, and of course Pennsylvania, the state I am in. Um, so these are the states, and you know, slowly you grow. It's been three years, so it's, it's You're been doing a lot. Yeah. You're, you're doing, doing really well. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, with Facebook, you don't need to travel in an airplane. <laughs> you, what yeah. you, the content you put out there is worldwide. So a lot of people from other parts of the world contact me and say, you know, they like what I'm doing and they need advice or mentoring. So I do that for them. 
and connect with them. That's the great thing about the internet. I know there's a lot of good and bad in everything, you know, so you try to do the good things and uh, go from there. Well, that's, that's really good. And you're getting international and you just keep on, keep on. It grows, doors open and your work is so good. And the children you're co contacting and working with, they're going to grow up and remember you and your work and it it gains and it's very important. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we end our conversation? Um, you know, talking about art, you know, you know, most of the memories I have were not always good about my childhood, but there's, you know, those few memories that, you know, stayed with you that were positive. So one of my art teacher, because I'm very uh, good with, I, I, I was very, in other classes I wasn't doing so well, but art was always like my favorite class that I was doing well. So he was so motivated, so inspired by my artwork that he said that he's going to put it in the museum, uh, our local museum. And that really made me happy. And, it, you know, like, these are the things we need to do. When we see a skill a child has, we need to help them develop it, encourage them, give them positivity and that inspires them to grow on and become great people and they will too also grow into leaders who will do good and not be bullies <laughs> boss bullies or co-worker bullies yeah that's really important and I, well, there's one more thing I want to just talk to you a little bit have you heard of ACEs uh, yeah can you just refresh my memory it's Adverse childhood events, yeah. which because mm -hmm, here and and that is tied with resilience because um, it's become in Alaska that it's it's a movement that's gotten really big because Alaska has one of the smallest populations in the country, but is one of the largest in a lot of the problems from drug abuse, spousal abuse, um, addictions, and adverse childhood events yeah that you know what happens and that's part of the problem with a lot of adults is that they've had they've never dealt with these problems they had when they were children in fact some people don't even connect problems they may be having as an adult with something that happened when they were a child yeah. so it's really good to have you doing the work you're doing because the type of work you're doing helps children through those adverse events and gives lets mm -hmm. them know there's options, there's other ways of living and other ways of doing things. Yes, yes. you're right. <laughs> so thank you. And um, I will be including links to your Facebook group. And um, I look forward to us getting together again in a few months. Oh, I want to say thank you for having me again. And it's, it's you know, great to share my, my, my whatever little good I could share with you and the, your audience. You know, it's a blessing. I'm very grateful for your time that oh, you invest in promoting good because you do a lot of good too you know i see you doing so much you know we have to not be competing with each other but promoting each other helping each other oh, working yeah. together because the world is a big place you do what you're doing in your corner i do what i'm doing in my corner and slowly we build the communities around us right thank you gomaki and um this is the end of our interview and we will be back with more women of color telling their stories.